Delaware tonight, the defending national champions, Virginia Cavaliers, take on the Boston College Eagles. Both teams off to strong starts in conference competition. A combined five and one in ACC play. And how about this? Virginia has not lost a regular season ACC game in nearly 11 months. With that, we welcome you inside Conti Forum. Malcolm Huckabee, Jay Alter with you. When you look at Virginia's success, a lot of people say it's team basketball. But if I made you pick an individual for our Geico player spotlight, Malcolm, who do you like? Kihei Clark. Uh, he's a guy that has a national title ring uh, in his toolbox, and he is a guy that I think is underrated on the national scene. Uh, you look at what he's done for the season. He's fourth in the ACC, close to six assists per game. He's coming off a very good game of win. First Virginia Tech, where he had 18 points and six assists. I think that's going to be a key matchup in tonight's game. On the other side of the court, leading scorer and starting point guard Derek Thornton out for Boston College with an ankle injury. It was already a tall task for this home Eagles team, but it just got a lot taller. Yeah, that's a tough break for Boston College, Derek Thornton. Their starting point guard, he is their leading uh, points per game and also assists per game for Boston College. Uh, that is going to be a tough task tonight against one of the better teams in the country. Terrific officiating crew tonight. Mike Eads, Jeff Anderson, Pat Adams, nine combined Final Fours in our crew tonight as we are underway in Virginia. Gets the first look. Cavaliers coming off their most complete game of the season, a big-time home win against Virginia Tech. What impressed you most in that game that they can carry into tonight, Malcolm? Well, I think from an offensive standpoint, that right there, they made some shots, they scored points. It's as simple as that. You know Virginia is going to defend. I think how they shoot the ball, and in particular, what type of balance they get is going to be key for them if they want to defend their national title. And with Thornton out of that starting lineup, you see there for Boston College, who can step up? Because they're going to need points to come from somewhere, and they're going to be at a premium against this Virginia defense. Well, it starts, it's going to have to be transition opportunities. You look at Virginia's two losses, they had turnovers. Purdue and South Carolina were able to pressure them and then force some turnovers, which allowed them to get out in transition. I think that's going to be key in this game for Boston College. In the two games that Tony Bennett lost, he said, we just didn't have the focus. They definitely had it against Virginia Tech trying to show up on the road tonight. And that's a second foul early for Mamadi Diakite. He had the first basket of this game, but two fouls in 52 seconds, and Tony Bennett makes a quick change. In comes Jay Huff. That's certainly not what you want to see if you're Coach Tony Bennett and Virginia. Your leading scorer going to the bench early. We haven't even played a minute in this game. This is the freshman C.J. Felder shuffles it over to Mitchell who gets fouled inside on his way to the rim. So Huff comes in, he immediately picks up a foul. Jim Christian's team, they've attacked the big man early. Three fouls at that position in about a minute and seven seconds. And with Diakite out, uh, that's a smart play by Boston College. Yeah, Jim Christian in year number six, and he picked up an injury. He goes, man, my players, they've been the one injured in my six years here. Two weeks ago, he had ankle surgeries in the boot. And he is still active on the court. That has not slowed him down on the sideline. Yeah, we had a chance to see him at shoot around today. He was out there uh, not missing a beat. And he says, look, I feel a lot better with that boot on and uh, not being able to move it. But uh, he knows his young team uh, is in for a fight tonight against Virginia. There is going to be nothing easy uh, on the offensive side for this Boston College club. Especially without their leading scorer, Derek Thornton. They almost did not have Stephen Mitchell in this game. He was a game time decision. Didn't feel good at shoot around, but he is suited up. Number 41 in white. He has been active early. Eight seconds to shoot. Rishway tries a three. It's off the mark. Three freshmen in this starting lineup for Boston College. 
Cavaliers trying to capitalize. Open three. No good for Cody Stapman, who's coming off a season-high 10 points in that win against Virginia Tech. And if you're Boston College, you will live with that. Virginia comes into this game shooting 27% from the three-point line. So you want to make them shoot the ball from the perimeter. Felder left open for three, can't hit it. A rare open shot that this Cavaliers defense will allow. And a foul called on Mitchell underneath. And that's a nice block out by Key going up against one of the better offensive rebounders in the conference. And Steph Mitchell. Throwing it off hard that time. Going to check on Key, but uh, that's going to be key for Virginia, keeping Stephon Mitchell off the offensive glass. Boston College brings pressure. Virginia almost had a flush. Huff could not get the finish. This is Jarius Hamilton passing out of a double team. Rich Wayne on the drive, scoop to the hoop, and that's the first bucket for Boston College. Well, that's twice now Boston College has been able to get dribble penetration and then get into the paint and finish. It's something that rarely you see against this Virginia defense. Inside to Huff, comes up empty. CJ Felder spins into attack mode off the window but does not drop. Kihei Clark, the hesitation, leads to a key three. No good. So both teams struggling to score the ball early. We expected that from Boston College. This right here is nice ball movement. Mitchell with a nice kick out pass and then again, poor closeout. Chris Wayne's able to get down the lane for a uncontested layup. Good ball movement by Boston College and heads up play by Chris Wayne. In 13 games this season, the Cavaliers defense has held nine teams under 50, four teams less than 40, but a basket there inside by Mitchell cleaning up the mess and giving Boston College a second made bucket. Yeah, and Stephon Mitchell leads the ACC in offensive rebounds, close to four offensive rebounds per game. And again, he is a guy that will go after any offensive rebound. Virginia must put a body on him every time. Well, when points are at a premium like they are when you play the Virginia Cavaliers, offensive rebounds can get you there. Corner three goes begging, and that's been a problem for the freshman. 15% from beyond the arc in his first year. Muscling his way to the hoop, and it drops for Jarius Hamilton. Well, you can see the difference in both offenses. Early on, Virginia, everything from beyond the arc. Boston College getting everything at the basket. Statman to three. That's no good. Virginia has come out ice cold. Rishway in a three. Cavaliers have missed their last six shots. Morcell on the move. Boston College is icing, putting every ball screen, forcing them down to the baseline. That time they decide to switch. Seven seconds to shoot. Kihei Clark throws it up, does not go. Boston College has come out so strong defensively. Mitchell drives right into the teeth of the Virginia defense. It was one on four, did not matter. He'll be at the foul line when we come back. And when we come back, we'll tell you. Talk about college basketball recruiting. It's far from an exact science. But if you can get a diamond in the rough, like Malcolm Huckabee thinks C.J. Felder and Casey Morsell could be, it, it's no surprise that they appear on these rosters. Jim Christian and Tony Bennett, they have done a great job doing this in their past as well. Yeah, they really have. You take a look at what they've done, and a couple of guys right here started off with Malcolm Brogdon, uh, the ACC Player of the Year. 
2015-16 goes on to the Bucks and wins NBA Rookie of the Year. And then for Boston College, Jim Christian and staff, Alan Kai Bowman, uh, one of the better guards in Boston College history, he goes on. And now he's filling in for the injured Steph Curry, uh, getting some starts for the Golden State Warriors. So uh, it's one thing to find them, but then both these guys have done a nice job developing some of these diamond and rub. What makes you think Felder and Morsell can go and be the next Brockton and Bowman? Well, I think the player development piece, again, it's not just about finding them, but I think the staffs do a nice job. I think on the other side with C.J. Felder coming off uh, one of his better games at Duke, uh, he has all the physical tools. He's about 6'7", does not look like a freshman. And then Casey Marshall, you look at uh, what Tony Bennett has done uh, at his time at Virginia. Uh, I look no further. Malcolm Brogdon, uh, what he was able to do with him and how he developed every year under Tony Bennett. Uh, really, it's just a phenomenal story, and I think that's the reason why he's one of the better coaches in college basketball. A great start for Boston College. They have forced Virginia to miss their last seven shots, no points in the last five minutes of play. Mamadi Diakite in early foul trouble with two fouls. He's off the court. Five seconds to shoot. Virginia has to hurry. Inside, Braxton Key. A tough take, but it goes down. And that's much better. Virginia not settling for threes. They're 0 for 4 from beyond the arc to start this game off. They got to be patient, get the ball in the paint. Jared Hamilton, the old, older brother of Jarius Hamilton, fadeaway shot goes down for the senior. That's a tough shot, and Boston College now showing a little three-quarter court pressure, and then they're going to drop back in. Looks like man-to-man, -man, but they're trying to give Virginia uh, some different looks on defense. Key looking for back-to-back -back baskets, passes out. A three as the shot clock sounds, and it's no good. Transition three, that is good. Jarius Hamilton with a transition triple. They've marked it right now only as a two. But an eight-point lead for Boston College. Malcolm, you could not have asked for a better start to this game if you're an Eagles fan. Well, Jim Christen, when we talked to him this afternoon at shoot-around, he said, look, we have to get out in transition like that, and then defensively, we have to force Virginia into jumpers. A foul as Braxton Key was on his way to the rim. Take a look right here, good ball movement. And then again, when you play against Virginia, you're gonna have to make individual plays like that. Hamilton with the beautiful turnaround. And then this right here, in transition, poor closeout. Hamilton made him pay. That's a great execution by Boston College. Understanding, try to get out in transition before this Virginia D can get set. Virginia fans very happy to have Braxton Key back. He missed three and a half weeks with that wrist injury. And him. Yes, he's been back for the last couple of weeks, but Tony Bennett felt he really came back in that Virginia Tech game, a double-double, 18 points, 10 rebounds. That's the Braxton Key he wants to see the rest of the season. Yeah, Tony Bennett calls him the Swiss Army Knife. He can do so many things on the court uh, for Virginia. can guard multiple positions. I think, though, his leadership, uh, I think that's the key thing that uh, he likes having out on the court. And certainly, all Virginia fans are happy to see him in the lineup. Jay Heath, the freshman, triggers a three, and he connects back, back. Big time buckets, and the freshman, Jay Heath, comes up with that one. Easier said than done, but everyone says, hey, to beat Virginia, you have to make shots. So far, Boston College, 6 of 11 from the field. That's tough to do against this team. But Braxton Key has woken up for the Cavaliers. Yeah, and that's going to be a matchup that I think Virginia needs to go at uh, with this lineup out here for Boston College. 
And the difference, Jay, with Virginia, they'll allow you to reverse the ball. They don't try to shoot gaps. They're not a team that's going to gamble. Uh, they're just going to stay home. So you can't do that right there, though, versus Virginia. Key has six of the Cavaliers' eight to start this game. Travel called against Thomas Wold the 10th side. Boston College could not have started this game any better. Started three freshmen, their leading scorer, Derek Thornton, not in the game. It has not mattered. A 15 8 advantage for BC. They say I'm dangerous. That's what he does. It's a jam for Brooks. Mark him up. He's got 20. Mike DeVoe is cooking. The reigning national champ slow out of the gate. Virginia trailing Boston College 15 to 8 alongside Malcolm Huckabee. I'm Jay Alter. When you talk about that national championship team and Tony Bennett, they were the best when it came to defense. Everyone kind of knows that, but they allowed opponents only 56 points a game. Now they're averaging 46 points a game, 10 points less than a national championship team a year ago. And yet, to start this game, Malcolm, Boston College shooting 6 of 11 from the floor. They are unafraid from this Virginia defense. Yeah, and I think uh, Jim Christian knew that his young team needed to have a fast start. If you look at their last game, Virginia uh, versus Virginia Tech, they held Virginia Tech to 17 uh, first half points. Right now, Boston College, we haven't played 10 minutes. They have 15, so excellent job of energy and getting off to a quick start by Boston College. With a hand in his face, does not matter. Jay Heath buries his second three of the night. This is only the third time all season Virginia has trailed in a game by 10 or more. Well, anytime you play against Virginia, you are going to have to hit contested shots. Uh, they lead the nation and points allowed per game, a big reason. They contest every shot, so when you play against them, uh, you know you are going to have to hit some tough shots early on. Uh, Jay Heath and his Boston College team are hitting contested jumpers in this game. Mamadi Diakite back on the floor after he picked up two fouls in less than a minute. Almost grabbed an offensive rebound there. Chris Heron Jr., deep three, does not go down. Clark blowing by Heron Jr., a foul called. Called against Jay Heath. Yeah, this one right here, Health has got to get there a little quicker. Yeah, and I like the call. Again, he's going away. Heath a little late on the help side defense and heads up play by Kia Clark. And that's something that Boston College has done a pretty good job of to start this game on, not allowing dribble penetration and then forcing of Virginia into three-point shots. And that time Kia Clark pushed the pace in transition. Clark, no surprise, 88% from the foul line gets both. Cavaliers 0 for 5 from 3. Their three made field goals have all come from inside the arc. Hey. CJ Felder blocked. Diakite says, get that out of here. Great pass. The finish, plus the foul, Braxton Key. That's great patience in transition offense, getting the secondary big. All started by the block by Diakite, and then they're off, Kia Clark. Fourth in the ACC in assist. That's a beautiful dime and finish.
Braxton Key has eight of Virginia's 12 in this first half. It completes the and one. Virginia has answered uh, with their run uh, to pull within five in this game. Hamilton to three, no good. <laughs> Kihei Clark keeps it himself this time. Everything but the finish, but got the offensive rebound. Second effort, no good from Diakite. Another great pass, and the finish is there from Steph Mitchell. Well, with Derek Thornton out with the ankle sprain, and he's their leading scorer and assist guy, the question coming into this game, how the freshman point guard, Jay Heath, would handle this Virginia D thus far. Uh, you can see on that last play, he is pretty comfortable in this offense. Chase Coleman leaves a three begging. Here's Heath again. Rishway showing off the dribbling skills, can't get the finish though. That's a nice block out that time on Steph Mitchell by Braxton Key. Diakite has his pocket picked by Mitchell. Two on two. He almost the and one rolled around but did not drop. The freshman at the foul line when we come back. Also when we come back, the Boston College Athletic Director, Martin Jarman. He'll join the broadcast when we come back with the basketball team. You have the defending national champs at home. Mm -hmm. How impressed are you with their performance tonight? Oh, very impressive. The energy level, the effort. Uh, both sides of the ball, offense and defense. Uh, I just love the energy that our team is playing with right now. And what is it, seven, eight points right now? Seven point lead. I'll take it. Yeah, oh, absolutely. It. <laughs> so you just hired a new football coach. We'll get to that in a second. But you were just also named to the NCAA Men's Basketball Oversight Committee. For those who don't know what that is, what's the goal of that committee and what excites you about being on it? Well, yeah, you're, you're nominated and, and it's a four-year term. And the Oversight Committee really works uh, with all college basketball. Uh, there are many things that come to the committee, decisions that have to be made, whether it's um, exemptions for games, whether it's uh, eligibility issues, um, all things, all facets of men's basketball, the college game, that decision making and thought about how we move forward in the game of college basketball goes through the oversight committee. So it's been, it's been great, it's my first year on it, uh, but some great people on the committee, some great student athletes as well, and. Uh, I'm excited to, to dig in and really help however I can. And you just have some exciting news in the last couple of weeks, naming a new head football coach here at Boston College, Jeff Halfley. What was it about Jeff that was the right fit for Boston College? Well, he's, he's phenomenal. You know, everybody that I had talked to was very positive about him. Uh, but he's a leader, he's a teacher, uh, does things the right way. And, uh, you know, he, he wins at a high level. He's elite. And uh, he was a great fit for us. Uh, he's a great fit for a lot of places, but particularly us with his background and, uh, and his effort and his drive. Uh, he's going to be he's going to be real good. We're excited about him. He's at the game right now. He's oh. probably texting. Oh, he's, like he's, hopefully he's, a, he's recruiting. He's a serial text <laughs> out there trying to. <laughs> hopefully he's no, landing a, a quarterback right now. You know, it's funny. I mean, we're still getting to know each other, but we we text probably 50 times a day. It wow. seems like. Uh, but he's he's all over. He's excited and he's. You know, he's got that energy level, too, and uh, we're excited about him. Well, Martin, before we let you get out of here, we got an important game, uh, the National Football Championship <laughs> game coming up. So I got to ask you before we get out of here, who's your pick? You know, both teams are, what, 13-0 and 0 or 14, no, probably 14-0. Uh, that's a tough one. You know, I'm pulling for Clemson, obviously, ACC in our division. Uh, Dabo and, and Dan Radakovich, their AD, great, great guys. So 
I'm hoping that uh, Clemson finds a way, but I don't know, man. It's going to be a great one. That's all I know. I'm going to watch it. I know that much. Perfect. Well, <laughs> Mark, thank you so much for coming on, giving us your time, and uh, certainly we'll be uh, looking for the progress that you make with this Boston College athletic program. Yes, sir. Appreciate you having me on. Awesome. Always good to see you, Huck. All right, awesome, Bart. Thank you very much. And, you. and hopefully you get to watch the BC hold on to a lead here. It's now a four-point advantage against Virginia as the Cavaliers are starting to kick it into gear. That just means I got to get out of yeah, here. Go, yeah, exactly. <laughs> go, go enjoy the game. All right, we'll see you guys. Thanks, Jamar. Bart. Well, that's awesome, and, and there's no doubt about it. If you're a Boston College fan, you've got the right guy as the athletic director. A lot of energy. He talks about the energy that his basketball team is brought to the court tonight, but he brings a lot of energy to this athletic department. He does, and right now, though, Virginia has matched that energy and uh, pulled right within four in this game, 538 to go in the first half. And I think a lot of folks, when they look at this score, might be shocked. Boston College with 21 points uh, in this first half, and they've executed well offensively against Virginia. Tough take at Mitchell. Slow the get up, so it's a five on four. Clark steps into a three and drills it. Kihei Clark pulls the Cavaliers within one. It's the first made three-point shot for Virginia tonight. And the versatility of Braxton Key that time leading the break and then finding Clark. the handle Morsell pull up pop no good Mitchell is fouled. And Boston College was so good at keeping care of the basketball. They've had three turnovers in the last three minutes as Virginia has mounted the comeback. Tomorrow night, another doubleheader right here on the ACC Network. We start at Chapel Hill. Pittsburgh take it on North Carolina at 7 o'clock. And then right after the nightcap, number two Duke. And Georgia Tech, both games right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN. <laughs> Steph Mitchell, he's gone to the foul line a lot tonight. He's been really aggressive, but he's only two of five when he gets there. Yeah, and that's one of the areas he struggles with. Came into this game shooting 53% from the free throw line. But he brings so much more to the table for Boston College. Uh, leads the ACC in steals. He's one of the better rebounders. He also leads the ACC in offensive rebounds. But they definitely need him when he gets to the free throw line in a game like this versus Virginia uh, to make those free throws. Boston College without their leading scorer tonight and yet control a two-point lead against Virginia. Dumped inside, but ripped away by Jay Heath. Jared Hamilton to his little brother, Jarius Hamilton, for the easy layup. Well, they're finding ways to break down the Virginia D, and what they're doing is ball fakes and then dribble penetration. They're getting the ball in the paint, and then the interior passing uh, has been good, and it's all set up by breaking down of the Virginia D getting into the paint. Five seconds to shoot. Virginia has to hurry. Key fires a three way off the mark. Boston College showing great patience on offense. Ball fake, interior passing, and Virginia, as we remind you, the ACC Network, they've got you covered for national championship game on Monday, kicking things off early. Packer Durham, 7 o'clock Eastern time. They have the huddle 
a two-hour pregame show right here on the ACC Network. And then this is awesome. You get the Clemson radio team on the call during the game. So you are well covered on Monday come National Championship game day. And at halftime, you'll get a great preview. Packer and Durham, they're going to compare the Virginia basketball dynasty of this decade to the Clemson football dynasty. And there are similarities there, especially when you look at the culture of those two programs. Rarely is, and I can't wait to see some of the nuggets that they give us. But right now, Boston College, just when I was ready to praise them about not turning the ball over in this stretch. <laughs> Always uh, happens like uh, that. Jinx them, and they turn it over. But still, that's only five turnovers for Jim Christian's team, and I think he would have taken that headed into the game. And especially with his leading scorer and leading assist guy on the bench unable to go tonight. Hold the 10 side, that rolls around the rim no good. What has impressed you most about Boston College's first half? Oh, their ability to get into the paint again against this Virginia pack line. You, you just don't see it uh, that often where they're able to get into the paint like that and then score. So uh, that's been what's so impressive because uh, they lead the nation for a reason and a uh, fewest points per game allowed. Statman answers with a three. Both of these teams, they are making contested shots. Both Heath and Statman there. We step aside for 30 seconds. Boston College leading by three. Tony Bennett's team, Malcolm Huckabee, Jay Alter with you. When we were chatting with the BC head coach, Jim Christian, he told us we need a fast start. It's so tough to come back on this Virginia team, and his team has delivered that fast start and a lead. Yeah, he said, look, Virginia is probably the worst team to try to come back against when you're playing catch up and in particular uh, when you have a freshman point guard uh, with the Derek Thornton on the bench his inability to go tonight so again uh, they've checked off all the boxes in terms of executing the game plan early on there's Thornton there did not dress tonight with an ankle injury Jay Heath who gets the ball here he is perfect from the field dished out a couple of assists as well Jared Hamilton draws a foul there. It's one thing to say to your team, hey, we need a fast start, a whole nother thing to execute it against this Virginia defense. That's exactly what Jim Christian said. He said, listen, I've been talking to him right. about it, <laughs> uh, but it's easier said than done. He had high praise uh, for this Virginia team. Certainly, he has to be pleased, though, with how his freshman point guard uh, has handled it. Well, Virginia's trailed twice this season at halftime, and they went on to lose both of those games. Thursday night, women's college basketball right here on the ACC Network. Louisville, the number seven team in the country, in Miami, taking on the Hurricanes, 8 o'clock Eastern time, right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Braxton Key, he's been the go-to guy, and he delivers again up to 11 points to lead all scorers. That's excellent ball movement again by Virginia. And Braxton Key has been the answer uh, for Virginia. shot from Luka Kraljevic. He's had some increased playing time. Now on the defensive end. Double team. Clark nowhere to go with it. Jared Hamilton. Everything but the finish did not drop and now here come the Cavaliers. A five on three. Clark. And back there CJ Felder the steal. He can't get the finish and finally Jarius Hamilton Puts it home, a chaotic sequence there. Uh, chaotic is exactly the word to describe that sequence right there. And the Boston College crowd comes alive for really the first time this half. 
A five point lead against number 18, Virginia. And Key fouled. He'll get two. Jim Chris. That's a bailout foul right there. You got the double team. Just stay straight up. Don't try to reach. Make him shoot a contested shot over you. If you're Jim Christian, you could not have been happier with this first half. But what's the message when you hit the locker room to make sure they could keep it for a full 40 minutes? Exactly that right there, Virginia. You know their calling card, which is defense and wearing you out. Obviously, uh, there's plenty of basketball uh, to be played, but in terms of executing the first half plan, getting out to a fast start, uh, they've checked that box off. Five seconds to shoot. Heath, he's had the hot hand, a triple team. Still puts it up. Oh, in perfect position for the follow, but Julian Rishway could not put it in. Tony Bennett's team only allowed 17 points in that great win against Virginia Tech over the weekend tonight. BC, the offense came out, and when you could put 30 on Tony Bennett's team and a half, that's pretty good. With your two leading scorers on the bench as well, too. Hacker and Durham at the half, and then you'll get Malcolm Huckabee set alert. It's only the third time this season Virginia has allowed 30 points in the first half. They lost both of the other two games, and Jay Heath, he's been the trigger guy offensively. Yeah, he was great in the first half right there with the three. I think this was key right here, him making individual plays against Kihei Clark, one of the better on-ball defenders, not just in the ACC, but in the country, right here with the steal, and then another individual play I think the key number for him to go along with the nine points, zero turnovers in that first half. Such an impressive performance for the freshman point guard so far tonight. Even more impressive when you consider he comes in in place of leading scorer, Derek Thornton. And boy, Heath has been a terrific. A four point lead for Boston College as we're back underway here in Chestnut Hill. Three freshmen on the floor for Jim Christian's team right now. One of them, C.J. Felder, taking it right into Mamadi Diakite. But great defense from the redshirt senior. And that's what he brings. He's the anchor of their defense, and that's just a great individual defensive play by one of the better defenders in the country. Diakite only played five minutes of that first half. He picked up two fouls early and sat a lot. Virginia missed him on both ends of the floor. Kihei Clark, a floater, does not drop. And a foul called against Boston College, Jay Heath, on the box out. Well, Heath and also Christian arguing that call. He felt like he was boxing out. And Christian feels like that was a tough call. at the rim by Mitchell. CJ Felder had a step and used it on Mamadi Diakite. That's a great job by Felder using his body to shield off Diakite. And uh, Diakite did not want to pick up another foul. Diakite scored the first two points of this game, has not scored since. And he lost the ball there. Well, this right here, beautiful help side defense by Stefan Mitchell. And then C.J. Felder, not looking like a freshman, using his body to shield off Diakite. That's a big-time move by the freshman, C.J. Felder. 
Felder lost a dribble this time. Boston College only committed five first half turnovers. That is tough to do against Virginia. They have to keep that going if they want to win. Yeah, and that's it right there. Again, you can't turn it over against this team. That's a missed opportunity, but in the first half, they did a really good job not turning it over, but then I think getting the ball into the paint, which is not easy to do against Virginia. out of the double team open three more sell leaves it short the freshman almost grabs his own rebound Mitchell came for it and a foul is called not a jump ball a foul called credit the hustle from the freshman Casey Morsell take another look yeah right here loose ball situation you would expect nothing less guys getting on the floor yeah, and I like to call though Mitchell step jump right over his back. So good call by the ref. You like the aggression, but that's the third foul against Steph Mitchell, and he takes a seat. Now, Jim Christian certainly wants his team to play with that aggressiveness, though. He does, but obviously with Mitchell, you do not want him on the bench. You're main rebounding guy and energy guy and that's what happens and when he goes to the bench beautiful execution and Diakite with the uncontested dunk right on cue for the Boston College lead back to four he left alone pulls the trigger Swirls around but does not drop. Step back jumper, Kihei Clark. Left it short. And nobody on the offensive glass for Virginia. CJ Felder driving through the lane, count it plus the foul. And that's twice now. CJ Felder, the freshman, showing great body control to avoid the charge. That's a beautiful finish. Concentration, eyes on the rim the whole time. And uh, we talked about finding a diamond in the rough. I think uh, Boston College, Jim Christian, and staff uh, have found another good one, NCJ Felder. Mamadi Diakite, widely considered one of, if not the best defender in the ACC, maybe all of college basketball. Felder's got the better of him twice in this second half. And with that one, picks up his third foul and heads to the bench. And he's coming off arguably one of his best games uh, in his young career for Boston College. It was a loss at Duke, but he led them 13 points and six rebounds. And I think he has all the physical tools uh, to be a very good ACC player. A seven-point lead now for Boston College, giving the defending national champions everything they can handle and more. Who's the guy that you go to right now if you're the Cavaliers for offense? Well, I think Braxton Key has got to be the guy, uh, but Boston College giving them a different look. Here is Key. Eyeing up Felder. Lost the handle. Tapped it out to Jay Heath. A one on four for Heath. It saves Boston College's way, though. A seven-point lead for Jim Christian with the defending national champions in the country. And then again, showing great body control. This young team, Boston College in particular, C.J. Felder and Jay Heath, have done a nice job not turning the ball over. And then when they've had their opportunities, they've finished. Malcolm, every coach in the country says, hey, we've got to make shots. Another one there, that time Jared Hamilton. Jim Christian said the same thing 
knew that possessions would be at a premium. What are they doing offensively to find all this success? Well, I think it starts with their defense. Right now, they have eight points off of turnovers versus Virginia, and then Virginia right now is shooting 18% from the three-point line, two of 11 for the game. Uh, they're contesting shots, and they're forcing Virginia to shoot contested threes and jump shots, and then they're getting out early and getting into their offense. Boston College has led for more than 21 minutes in this game. Virginia has only led for two minutes. That's when they went up early, 2-0. No doubt about it, the Eagles have dominated this game. Virginia looking to punch back. Braxton Key draws the contact and will go to the line for two. Tomorrow night, another college basketball doubleheader of the ACC right here on the ACC Network. Pitt in North Carolina gets you started at 7 o'clock Eastern time. And then number two, Duke taking on Georgia Tech. Both games right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Key gets both from the foul line back to a seven-point advantage for BC. Jay Heath with Clark in his face. The bank open late in Chestnut Hill. Jay Heath buries his third three of the night. It's been that type of night for him. That's great defense by Kihei Clark. And shot clock winding down. Jay Heath contested deep three off the glass. An answered prayer. Virginia an inch away from the basket and can't get that to fall. Well, you can't play it any better right here. Kia Clark, shot clock grinding down, and then the bank, as you said, is open. Jay Heath, the freshman guard for Boston College, hitting another tough contested three. And Clark tried to pick the pocket of Heath that time, called for the foul. I mean, if you're just tuning into the game, it, oh man, Virginia's having an off night defensively. They're not. This is a BC team that is just hitting contested shots. And Jim Christian, as we talked to him before this game at shoot around, he said, listen, uh, they're different in how they play defense, that pack line. They'll allow you to reverse the ball. Uh, they'll allow you to run your sets. They're just not going to give you much dribble penetration. So you're going to have to continue, which they've done tonight, hit contested shots. Another tough make, this one courtesy Jarius Hamilton, and it's the largest lead of the night for BC, and this home crowd is in full voice. Another turnover. But the Cavaliers get it right back. No made field goals in the last four minutes for the Cavaliers. Statman trying to change that, and the sophomore does. Cody Statman, a much-needed basket for Virginia. Another deep three, this time short from Hamilton. Clark playing with pace. That's a good job of transition D by Boston College. Statman finds Huff, and that's a perfectly executed pick and roll. Virginia with back-to-back -back baskets. Boston College takes a timeout. Eagles up eight. On the road by eight. A back to back buckets, though, uh, by Virginia. The first right here, nice little curl cut. No help by Boston College. 
And then the second time, Virginia in a pick and roll. The help is late. And just like that, they're back down to single digits. Jim Christian seen enough, called a timeout. Uh, but Virginia has got their work cut out for them in this game. 12.42 to go, second half. Uh, trailing Boston College by eight. He's Malcolm Huckabee. I'm Jay Alter. You look at that lead time. Virginia took the lead 2-0. That's their only lead of this game. BC's largest lead is 12, but here come the Cavaliers. Kihei Clark got the steal, could not come up with the bucket. And Tony Bennett, very animated. That's about as animated as you will see Tony Bennett on the sideline. Uh, he felt there was a lot of contact on that last drive by Kihei Clark after the turnover. And Tony Bennett was so pleased with the performance against Virginia Tech over the weekend to improve to 3-0. Thought that was their most complete game of the season, but that performance has not showed up tonight so far in Chestnut Hill. Five seconds to shoot. Hamilton pulls the trigger from three. No good. If you're Boston College right now, the thing you don't want to do is give up layups or paint points. Force Virginia to shoot the ball from the perimeter right now for the game. They're 18% up from beyond the arc. It's two of 11 from three. Snapman, he's been the go-to guy. High off the window and good. Cody Stabman's been involved in the last three baskets. Two makes himself and a nice assist to cut this lead to six. A six-nothing run by the Cavaliers. Steph Mitchell can't get the answer. Diakite in transition. Got the foul, did not get the basket. The Boston College lead was as large as 12. Virginia has cut that in half to six, 42-36. Little more than halfway left of this second half alongside Malcolm Huckabee, I'm Jay Alter. Mamadi Diakite heading to the foul line. He only played five minutes in that first half and he is such a big part of this Virginia team. Only three fouls right now after he picked up two of the first 53 seconds. And him staying in this game and being productive will be the key for the Cavaliers down the stretch. You can tune in tomorrow for the Wooden Award Midseason Top 25 Special presented by Wendy's. Mamadi Diakite right now in the top 50 as that list gets cut in half to 25 and the women's list goes from the top 30 to the top 25. It starts at 6.30 Eastern on ESPNU. And Jim Christian, when we spoke to him this afternoon, he said, listen, uh, he drew high praise uh, from Jim Christen. He felt he's a guy that's a next level guy, a guy that uh, will be playing for a paycheck uh, when he leaves Virginia. He said, listen, I think he's just underrated. Uh, I think on the national scene, uh, he is that good, does so much for Virginia. Ty Jerome, DeAndre Hunter, Kyle Guy, they all decided to leave after that national championship. It was Diakite who decided to come back. Right now in a dogfight on the road. Great job on the defensive end, Diakite. The denial, can they cash in on the other end? Inside the Jay Huff, and he'll head to the line for two. With the injuries for Boston College, they're going with a smaller lineup. Uh, but with this lineup, I think they can switch a uh, two through five with the Hamilton brothers out there, Stefan Mitchell and C.J. Felder. Huff shooting 52% from the foul line, so he's the guy you want standing there if you're Boston College. Makes a second, though, to make this a four-point game. An eight-nothing run for Virginia. Oh, 
Double team for Mitchell. He turns it over. This is the suffocating Virginia defense that you're used to seeing. It is, and I think right now, Boston College, the turnovers. Uh, we It was not an issue in the first half. In the second half, though, they've had some turnovers. Obviously, uh, you're going up against the top defense uh, in the nation, arguably. And Jay Heath taking a hard ball. Came up holding his wrist. Certainly, that would not be uh, something that Jim Christian could afford right now. And already in the bonus, so a one and one. Kihei Clark. Makes them both. So a 10 nothing run right now for the Cavaliers since BC had that 12 point lead. Hamilton off balance, but somehow it goes for the senior, Jared Hamilton. Well, that's at least four or five times tonight where Boston College has made some shots. Really, they have no business making them. Yep. I mean, that's good defense right there. Hamilton stuck up in the air and somehow is able to get that one to go in. First basket for BC in nearly four minutes and a steal here for the Eagles. And Heath lets it fall out of bounds. Total circus shot here, Malcolm. Yeah, uh, this is great defense right here. Again, guy stuck. You get caught there. He didn't even shoot it with his right. That is just a really a tough break for Virginia. You can't play any better D. And uh, sometimes when you're going to have an upset or you get one of these nights where it seems like everything is going, uh, in particular against one of the top Ds. And you're just not seeing, used to seeing shots like that go down against Virginia. Mitchell on the drive again. Right back to Jared Hamilton. To his little brother, Jarius Hamilton. No good on the three. That's a bad possession for Boston College. Deep again in the shot clock. Nobody on the offensive glass. That's all Virginia defense right there. Statman. Oh, Cody Statman. He's starting to feel it up to 11 points a season high. That was the toughest one of the game right there. Spin move somehow kept his balance. That's his great concentration. And he has been the guy in the second half to give them a boost offensively. He missed about three weeks with an illness, but he has come back and been a force for Tony Bennett, constantly improving, showing off the handles here. Uh, that's just tough. That's <laughs> just tough right there. Made it look easy and otherwise a really difficult shot in traffic. And you're right. Uh, in the second half, he has been the guy. And right now, referee talking to Kihei Clark. Felt like he was trying to show him up. Mitchell fouled on a tough take. He's at the foul line. With only two seconds on the shot clock, right into the teeth of Mamadi Diakite and Jay Huff. And that is Huff's fourth foul. You are watching ACC Network Basketball presented by Geico, number 18, Virginia, trailed by 12. The lead down to two, and that's because Cody Stampin, the, the sophomore, an 11-point performance, a career high now. Yeah, the sophomore out of Australia has really been the key in the second half for Virginia. Uh, right here, again, in the paint, strong finish. He's passed a beautiful no-look pass to a wide open layup and then right here showing off the handles spin and finish Jay he reminds me a little bit of Ty Jerome and Kyle really? guy because he's not going to wow you with elite athleticism but understanding how to play feel for the game solid 
So he spoke with Tony Bennett before the game, and he said he took Cody Stampin aside earlier this season and said, this is just much your team that it is Mabadies. Don't just feel like you can be a role player. You can make this team what you want to make it. And he has really come back from the illness, taking that advice to heart, and back-to-back -back season high and then a career high for the Australia. A three-point deficit for UVA right now. You never know what's going to happen at ACC play. Cavaliers have not lost a regular season conference game in 11 months. Kia Clark trying to take it all the way himself. And a jump ball for the rebound. Possession arrow stays with the Cavaliers. Have you told Jim Christian that without Derek Thornton, your leading scorer, out with an ankle injury that you would be up three against the defending national champions with 7.30 to go in the second half, you would take it. Yeah, and you have 45 points. <laughs> I tell you, there's so many things going right for them, but, you know, he obviously has to be pleased, and I think it's been the freshman. A break in the play. Jeff Anderson telling us they are making sure the ball hit the rim and that shot clock would reset to 20 seconds. And they want to make sure they get it right. Obviously, a close game. Every second, every tick on the clock is going to count. From that angle, it really is tough to tell. Yeah, it's, 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 it's tough from that angle right there. <laughs> Might have just too. grazed it, but... Nothing convincing to tell you that it that it did or did not. Yeah, it really, it, typically when it hits the rim, you can see a change of direction or changes, but you can't really tell uh, in that instance. So they called it on the floor that it did hit the rim. I don't know if that look tells you one way or the other. So they're going to, so they're gonna keep it at 20. And I think that's the right call, really. There's no uh, evidence off of that replay right. to suggest otherwise to change it. Braxton Key into attack mode. Too much on it. Tapped out to Clark with one on the timer. Kihei Clark drills it. And we're tied at 45. And on the defensive end, Clark pokes it away to Diakite through traffic, the hoop and the harm. And Virginia has its first lead since it was 2 0. What a sequence of events. Tough break for Boston College. And then right here, the defense. Beautiful individual play. And then Kihei Clark leading the break. Beautiful drop-off pass to Diakite. And the Virginia bench is loving it. This is the tough break right here, though. Boston College had Virginia deep in the shot clock. And then Kihei Clark, a big three for Virginia. Clark was our Geico player spotlight at the start of the game. And you just see in that 60-second period, hits a three, gets a steal, gets a great assist. It's amazing, Tony Bennett, when we asked him about his recruitment of P.A. Clark and when he gave him a chance when not too many other Division I programs were. He saw something, and obviously he's got a great eye for talent. And Tony Bennett was actually out recruiting one of his teammates, but Clark caught the eye out in California at the time. He was committed to UC Davis. Tony Bennett said, man, UC Davis got a good one. Clark decommitted. Tony Bennett called. He committed without even visiting Charlottesville. He's got a national championship, and now as a sophomore, one of the leaders of this year's Cavaliers team. Clark on the drive, pull up, pop. This time he left it short. Offensive rebound, key a three. Can't hit it. A lot of contact, they say. 
It's against Virginia. Called against Justin McCoy. Cavaliers on an 18 to three run over the last seven minutes and change. They have completely changed the momentum in this game. Yeah, they really have. And I think they forced now Boston College into contested jumpers. Uh, whereas in that first half, they were getting the ball into the paint. And Boston College punch back. Great pump fake steps into the shot and is fouled. Jared Hamilton, the senior, heads to the foul line. That's a great use of the head fake that time by Hamilton. Uh, caught Statman coming out out of control on the closeout. Thursday night, women's college basketball right here on the ACC Network. Number seven, Louisville taking on the Miami Hurricanes. Eight o'clock Eastern time on the ESPN app and the ACC Network. Boston College just eight of 14 from the foul line. It's a basketball cliche, but games won and lost from the foul line. And BC has left six points there tonight. And especially in yeah. this game, it's definitely no cliche when you're going up against uh, the leader in the nation in terms of allowing the fewest points per game. Every point does count in a tight game. And Hamilton, who had been shooting 94% from the foul line, misses both. <laughs> Kihei Clark has completely taken over this game in the last few minutes. He really has. He's pushed the pace. Uh, he set his teammates up, and obviously you know he's going to defend. He sets the tone defensively for this Virginia team. He drove it right at a man 11 inches taller than him. Stefan Mitchell caused the foul. That's Mitchell's fourth. The Kihei automatic from the foul line. Close to 90% on the season. You mentioned the recruitment story. It's such a good one. To the UC Davis to UVA. It's one thing to, to do that, to come here and really not be unfaced. He knew he could play at this level, and he did so as a freshman and has even improved and ratcheted it up in his sophomore season. Yeah, Tony Bennett just talked about his competitive nature. Uh, he said at times at the end of practice, Jerome and Guy would be in there and it would turn into a shooting contest when practice was over with these guys. Jared Hamilton delivers a much needed basket for Boston College. Five minutes to go and a one possession game here in Chestnut Hill. Clark, the blow by, can't get it to go. Draws the contact and gets it to drop. A chance to tie the game at the foul line. Wow, what a play from the freshman, Jay Heath. Well, he continues to lose, use his length against Kia Clark. Again, getting into the paint area, take the hit, finish. That is a big time bucket for Boston College. Heath stepped into the point guard position tonight when leading scorer Derek Thornton was unable to play with an ankle injury. He leads BC with 14 points, looking to make it 15. He does just that, and we are tied at 50. Puts it up. Mitchell was not fooled. A great stop for BC. 
That is a great individual one-on-one -on -one defensive stand by Stephon Mitchell. Playing with four fouls as well. Felder triggers a three. No good. open for three Jay Hoff can't hit it offensive rebound pulled down by Diakite and he was fouled you never know what is going to happen BC without their leading scorer Derek Thornton tonight but Jay Heath the freshman point guard has filled in 15 points and a sophomore Cody Stappen has willed Virginia back from down 12 to now tied at 50 for the final 316 Diakite came into this game shooting 75% from the free throw line. A big make there to give Virginia the lead. The Cavaliers have only led for four minutes and 23 seconds in this game. BC has controlled it for most of it. But can they close out the final three minutes with the defending national champs in their building? Hamilton drives into traffic. That's not the look. Well, it's the right idea trying to get the ball to the basket, though. That time, though, he was trying to avoid the contact. A travel called against the sophomore, Cody Stapman, on a night where he's had a career high, costly turnover there. First turnover for Virginia in six and a half minutes. That's the time they've come back in this game. He backing down. Clark puts it up and in. BC back on top. Well, he continues to use his length. He's just going right at T.A. Clark. And I'm going to say it again. He's one of the better on ball defenders in college Clark trying to answer right back and a foul called on Jay Huff Boston College basketball and that's the fifth foul against the seven foot one junior Huff has fouled out of this game all right here Kihei Clark would love to have that one back. That's just a point-blank layup that he missed. And then Jay Heath continues to flex, going right at Kihei Clark. That's just a great individual one-on-one -on -one move. And he has been huge for Boston College. To go along with his 17 points, I think the big number for him, and I'm going to say it, he had zero turnovers in the first half. He's only had one in the second. Uh, he's done a nice job running the offense and then taking care of the ball for BC. Seventh foul against Virginia, so Stephen Mitchell heads to the line where he's four of eight. A one and one upcoming for the junior. He missed it. Battle for the board. Who's got it? And a foul called against Virginia. It'll be Boston College basketball waiting to see who it was called on. And it looks like they're going to get Braxton Key. A loose ball situation. Yeah, that's a tough ball right there. Now, I couldn't see it from that angle whether or not he pulled them back but that's a big break for Boston College so another one and one for the senior Jared Hamilton 94 percent for the line coming into the game but two of four tonight and a big time make 
ACC Network takes you all access to Miami women's basketball. You'll get never before seen footage from head coach Katie Meyer and her staff. The one hour show premieres Sunday, 8 o'clock Eastern Time, right here on the ACC Network. Rolls around the rim, does not go. Three misses for Hamilton for the foul line. He's only missed one for the charity stripe headed into this game. No field goals in the last five minutes for the Cavaliers. Virginia trying to get Diakite posted on C.J. Felder. What a take! Braxton Key on the blow-by, and we're tied at 53. Timeout, Jim Christian, with less than 90 seconds left in regulation. Braxton Key with his first make this half. It's a big one. Yeah, and that's a breakdown by Hamilton. You must force Virginia to shoot the ball from beyond the arc. The defense is not set. Help is late. That's a big-time bucket by Braxton Key. He made that look easy. That's a difficult shot with that left hand. And Virginia looking to continue that winning streak and stay undefeated in ACC play for Boston College. What a statement win this would be for this program to advance to 3-1 and one and beat the defending national champions at home. Yeah, it would, and I think, you know, also to go in and, I guess, lost in this, they're doing it without two of their leading scorers. Uh, Nick Popovich has been out. Derek Thornton, their leading scorer and also assist guy on the bench. And what does Boston College do with a freshman point guard? They put up 53 points against Virginia. And 53, you might as well call that 100 against this Virginia D, the way they've been playing. And certainly if you're Jim Christian, you have a chance to win. You have to be pleased with how your young guys have played. Two starters out for Boston College coming off their biggest loss of the season against Duke. Virginia coming off with Tony Bennett called their most complete game and a great win against Virginia Tech. Couldn't have found two teams at the opposite of the spectrum, but yet, ACC basketball, you come together on a Tuesday night, and we've got a tie game with a minute and a half to go in regulation. Who do you want to get the shot here if you're BC? Well, I think you put the ball right back in this guy's hand. Let him go make you a play either for himself or set up somebody for a dive to the basket or a look from beyond the arc. Suffocating defense coming from Virginia. Boston College uses their last timeout, so they will have zero timeouts remaining with a minute and 18 seconds left in this game. Tony Bennett and Virginia have three. You look at the ACC standings, everybody is at the parity in this league, and no better example than this game tonight. Yeah, really not. I mean, you look at it, uh, really, I mean, you can say four, five through 15, uh, roll the dice when those teams match up, but uh, Boston College right now against uh, arguably one of the better defensive teams uh, in the country, uh, they're putting up some nice stats offensively, but I think the thing that's been equally as impressive, their defense. Uh, they played excellent defense against Virginia, forced them into some difficult shots, and then they've cleaned up on the defensive glass. Tony Bennett's team has been tested here tonight at Boston College. Coming up next, you got Virginia Tech and Syracuse. Your ACC Network doubleheader continues, but we've got a fun finish coming here. Ten seconds to shoot. Heath, the leading scorer for BC tonight with 17. A deep three. Clark at his face. Air ball. And it's Virginia basketball with a minute and eight seconds remaining. And that's a rookie mistake. Uh, one of the few times that he's made a bad decision in this game right here. Shot clock winding down. You've got to drive the ball to the hole. Don't settle for a jumper. That's just great defense, though, by Kihei Clark. Braxton Key into attack mode. Rolls around the rim. Does not go. 50 seconds remaining. Boston College out of timeouts. 
Heath with Clark in his face like he has all night. Passing off a three. Hamilton, he hits it. Jared Hamilton drills a big time three. Timeout, Virginia. Wow. Jay Heath was caught in the air. Thought he was going to go up with it. Saw Hamilton out of the corner of his eye. And the senior steps up and drills it. So right here, the help defense forcing Brad key into a tough shot. They get the rebound, the presence, and then right here, Jay Heath, the freshman, making a play. Hamilton with a huge three to put BC on top. The bench and crowd is loving it. If you would have asked Jim Christian coming into this game that you're going to be without two key pieces and you're going to be starting a freshman point guard and you're going to put up 56 and have a three-point lead, he'd say no way. What do you do here if you're Virginia? Plenty of time. You got to get into your offense early. You don't need a three, but you got to get something going to the hoop quick. Virginia's offense not built for speed, but they do have to get a look. And Tony Bennett recognizes that and takes a timeout. He's down to one. A correction there. The last timeout actually got credited as an official review of the three. So Tony Bennett still with two timeouts remaining. Well, let's take a look at strategies. For Boston College at Simple, you have to keep the ball in front of you. Do not give up any dribble drives. And then if you do get beat, the help must be there. Force, though, Virginia into everything from outside the paint. If you're Virginia, they're taking too much time to get into their set. Absolutely. Center. You have to get into your offense early. Look, if a three comes off of penetrate and kick, that's fine. You still have time, though, for a quick deuce and then you can set up time to get a steal or put somebody on the free throw line that you want shooting. But certainly they have to get into their set much quicker. Who do you want shooting this basketball? Well, I think it's gotta be Braxton Key. He's been the guy in this last two minute stretch that's been able to break down the Boston College defense. Let him get free on the wing off of a high ball screen with Kihei Clark and then let him go to work. But certainly, it has been a struggle for Virginia all game long. Credit Boston College. They've done a nice job forcing Virginia into some difficult shots. Braxton Key has led the way for Virginia. 16 points on 5 of 12 shooting. Kihei Clark, 20 seconds left in regulation. Diakite tries a three. It's off the mark. Rebound Boston College and a foul comes in. Well, Virginia chose to get a three in that situation. That was a set play, and it looked like it was designed from the beginning to have Diakite come off. Little rub screen. Diakite, and I'm not sure if that's of the best look that you want if you're Virginia, Mamadi Diakite coming off a pin down for a three. And certainly credit Boston College and this guy right here, Stefan Mitchell, coming up uh, with the rebound. So the 19 foul against Virginia. One and one coming for Stefan Mitchell, where he is four of nine at the foul line. Tony Bennett down to one final timeout. Well, we talked about this earlier in the game, free throws. That's the one area Stefan Mitchell uh, does a lot for Boston College. Rebounds, uh, leads the ACC in steals per game. Uh, but free throw shooting, that is the one area where he struggles. Comes into this game shooting 53% from the line. He's got two big ones right here. Excuse me, it's a one and one situation. Made the first, will get the second.
what a make for the junior Mitchell. The weight of the game on his shoulders. An opportunity to make this a five-point lead. Makes it. Virginia has to hurry it again. This offense not accustomed to doing so. Quick three. Statman can't hit it. Battle for the board. Tapped around. Diakite taking three eagles on. And it's BC basketball with 4.2 seconds left. And Braxton Key is on the floor. Holding that left wrist. And he missed three and a half weeks with that wrist injury being attended to. That is the last thing you want to see if you're a Virginia fan. Meanwhile, Conti Forum is ready to party. A five-point lead for Boston College and only 4.2 seconds remaining. And these hustle plays really have summed up of this night for Boston College. Loose ball situation. You really couldn't see from that angle what happened. It looked like he was bracing the fall with that left wrist. That is something to monitor, certainly once this game is over. Zaxby's player of the game, the freshman point guard, came in for the injured Derek Thornton, ran the point terrifically. 17 points to lead BC, and now four seconds away from a statement win. And I think this, in his young career, uh, best game uh, in a Boston College uniform. Uh, he ran the point guard position well, made big shots for them, but I think the biggest thing, how he handled the pressure of Virginia. BC cannot run the baseline. Foul came in immediately on Cody Statman off the ball before the ball was even inbound. And now two shots coming for Boston College and during the double bonus. Jim Christian told us, punch him in the mouth early, get a fast start. That's exactly what BC did. They've led for more than 30 minutes in this game, but when Virginia came roaring back, you felt the momentum change. It was the second punch that secured this game. Yeah, really, it's, it's an impressive all-around uh, performance for Boston College uh, in this game. I think the start, though, was key. Uh, they jumped out to an early lead against Virginia and then they were able to execute and then withstand of the run uh, by Virginia in the second half. Clark hustles it up court, fires the last shot, but it does not matter. A statement win for Jim Christian and Boston College. Handing Virginia their first regular season ACC loss in 11 months. The defending national champions go down here in Chestnut Hill. For Malcolm Huckabee, our entire crew, I'm Jay Alter saying so long. BC wins a thrill.